Okay. There we go. We're recording. Got it. Okay. Well, since we got the recording in NIC4 after the top of the hour, let's, let's rock and roll here. Thank you for uh, joining the uh, 20th of April here, 2023, Supply Hyperledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance Special Interest Group. And as you see in the title there, thank you, Alicia, for uh, putting together agenda here. Uh, we're going to talk about ebook planning. Uh, first off, as all Hyperledger events, webinars, et cetera, et cetera, there, all are welcome. Um, and we value everyone's input. So uh, please speak up, share, put stuff in chats. And there's plenty of stuff as we uh, go on here um, and continue with this project and our other uh, thoughts as we go along. Um, also, antitrust policy, please don't share anything confidential, competitive, et cetera, et cetera, since these are open meetings. And I mean, since it's going to be on YouTube, I guess that makes about as open as it can be out there <laughs> if it's going to be on YouTube. But, you know, uh, so that's that. So let's see here. Upcoming events. Um, here, April 20th, today, uh, 1 to 3 Eastern time, if you're interested, you can uh, do the GS1 U.S. Supply Chain Visibility Summit. And then well, let's go to announcements here. I'm going to do one before the tool. We turn it over to you here. Um, NIST, so the National Institutes of Standard Technology here in the United States, has a manufacturing supply chain traceability pro project that they're trying to establish some patterns and they're in the comment period for their document. So if you click on that link, you'll go to their page and then you can see what they're planning to do and you can provide some comments if you uh, so choose. So with that, let's go to Atul Anand, who's a PhD candidate and he has, he has some great stuff he's trying to figure out with what's going on with blockchain and supply chain. And he has a survey out there that, uh, is in the link there. It's also on the wiki and the mailing list. And uh, we thought we'd give him a few minutes here to share some of what he's trying to do and uh, what that what the result will be. So Tool, it's over to you. Thanks a lot. And uh, thanks everyone for being appreciative of uh, providing me this time. So let me quickly start sharing my screen. Uh, 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 since I can see this is getting recorded, can we stop the recording? Reason being is because since some of the elements are still not published, and I you know I want to ensure that you know first it get published as part of the paper, and then you know if we can record it. So that's the only thing which I have a request. So can we do that? You know, and uh, we can start recording. Good point, Thomas. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So thanks, thanks everyone. So as I said, uh, the survey is basically targeted for a set of people who have the background knowledge of blockchain and people who have a flavor for supply chain. Uh, people who are in finance domain, but then they have a view of you know how things work across, right? Because supply chain is basically origination of things from uh, from the raw material, you know, moving across the value chain, right? So that's how, so if they have view and if they have, you know, they have their own sort of things, you know, knowing about the supply chain and obviously you know, all of us are, you know, blockchain experts, right? So they can, they can be those people who can fill the survey. Yeah. So it's not, it's not only restricted to, uh, to supply chain professional, uh, but then it is restricted to uh, all set of professionals who have the working on job of blockchain. Yeah. That's, that's how I encourage other people to uh, put their thoughts across. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Atul, for uh, sharing uh, your work here. And again, folks, it'll be in the agenda so that you're able to access the survey, share it with others out there so and get the responses and come back. And Atul, I invite you to stick around here because we're going to be talking about uh, ebook and success stories. And we're trying to filter the, the wheat from the chaff or the uh, the, the sort of stories from the real stories out there. Maybe that's a better way to say it <laughs> out there. So before we go on, so thanks to Tool, let's continue on. Ling, if you'd like to introduce yourself uh, to the group here, we're glad that you're here and uh, look forward to hearing, hearing what your thoughts are, what you're looking uh, for. Hi, it's my first time to be here. My name is Ling W. Chan. I'm the founder and CEO of Ledger Funding, a blockchain fintech uh, company that democratizes the uh, working capital solutions. And uh, we've been an early adopter of Hyperledger Fabric since uh, release 0. 0.6 since um, 2016. It's been a long wow. journey. And wow. uh, I finally have uh, been able to uh, join this group. So I'm looking here to uh, to learn. <laughs> Beautiful. 
Yeah, welcome, Thank Ling. That, that's great. You're actually building a solution. And uh, you, even better, I like that you're still with us. You're still yes. with it. You're six years later, you started in 2016, you're still cranking. <laughs> yes. Keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And it's called Ledger Funding. If you want to put yes. the link in the uh, chat, that's fine here. Sure. Um, so let's use that as a springboard because you got a real solution there. Uh, and, and it has some flux or some, uh, I guess, relevance for our, what our next topic is. Let me uh, share my screen here. And there we go. Share. Okay. So. Last time, I'll just do a, re a quick recap here. Last time we talked about uh, a goal of our SIG to create a form of an ebook. And don't think ebook in terms of writing 100 pages, think ebook more in terms of 20 pages with pointers to existing content that's out there. And there's already a couple prototypes or, or templates that we can use. You see in the link that's there, uh, the Capital Markets, SIG, created one around uh, central bank digital currencies. And then the Hyperledger and in India crowd, they created an ebook to represent some of a lot of stuff that's going on with Hyperledger in India. Pranub, you may have been involved with that for all I know um, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so in any case, so now we want to do something very similar to uh, for supply chain and trade finance. And so I'm going to switch what screen I share here. So out of last time's uh, meeting on the 6th of April, uh, we said that one of our goals for this meeting is to start at listing some of the projects that are out there that have some, either we know they have success or they may have some success and are sus suspects that we could represent as using some flavor of Hyperledger in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't have to be fabric. It could be anything, but it uses Hyperledger fabric, and it has some level of success out there in the marketplace there. And so the good news is, is over the last two weeks, I'm just going to scroll through it. And here, what I'll do is for those of you who would like, I'm going to take this link and I'm going to put it in chat here. Send here, let me get rid of that. Okay, so there's probably about 15, 16, lots of comments that people have put in. Jeff, thank you for uh, being active and in, in, in even using chat GPT to try to come up with some answers <laughs> on it. So you yeah, win the- what a mistake that was. <laughs> but also a really, good, a really good learning. Just watching yeah. what you and Tomas were exchanging on that, that was useful to me. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it throws answers at you, and then you challenge the answer, and it apologizes to you and says, well, how about this? Then? And Tomas found the same thing, and then it throws you off course. It's like, okay, what am I using here? Um, so it, it did come up with some good answers, though, at the same time. But its okay. knowledge is also limited to 2021, and it tells you that like, many times. <laughs> oh, it does tell you that? 2021? Okay. That's yeah. two years ago. That's yeah. That's interesting. I think it's September 2021, but still, yes. Yeah, it's working data set stops at 21. Yeah. Interesting. So, so, so the good news is, is we have lots of lots of uh, thoughts here that are potential um, topics for us to share in our ebook, and the links that you see here underneath it are external public content that we could use for representing. Here, here's what the value was associated with this story here. So I'll show, you know, there's DLT labs. I mean, these guys have presented on our, um, uh, on our SIG back, what was it, a couple months ago, something like that. I think it was in February when they presented. In mm -hmm. Ling, you're, you're welcome. Obviously, these, a lot of any of these links, you're welcome to go and look at them and you can see some of the previous presentations that we've had here. Um, in DLT Labs, there's also a Harvard Business Review article that talks about what they've done. And, you know, they've done a couple of presentations with us. So, you know, they, they feel like one that, yes, we want to highlight um, out there. And then there's others, Recycle Go. I don't know much about this one. Uh, UAE Trade Connect. These folks presented last year. On our, actually, they presented Trade Finance in 2021. And then last year, they presented here. 
and they have a successful story there. Um, you know, I did some research on Moby and, and I even sent an email off to the person and I, or what the person who presented their battery verification numbers and mm -hmm. I'm not seeing anything. So if anybody has any sense of what's going on in Moby, that they have something that's an actual application, um, you know, let, bring it up, bring it up here. But right now I'm feeling like Moby, there's probably not anything that fits our bill with what we're talking about. There. Someone different from Moby presented to the social impact SIG a few years ago. So I can reach out to her and, and check in as well to see. If okay. That'd be great. Alive. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, Trade walls presented last year, so trade kind of a trade lens clone, um, but they're still in business, <laughs> so um, that's good here. Uh, GSBN Global Shipping Business Network here. Um, I'm not sure who put in Voic. We don't really see exactly. I guess we should have put names on who put these things in, but we have some other ones. Voy, Green Token, Renault presented a couple of years ago, um, and Fujitsu Trash Track and Trace. So those are some examples of what we're put in here. And then Nick Jones put in farm to plate. So I'm just kind of going through here just to kind of share a little bit. And you can look at the comments. They use fabric. Okay. And it looks like they got some value out there. And they use GS1, as I pointed out. Jeff, you had looked at this green chain. I don't know if, it, yeah. if this is this look like something. Did Chat GPT come back with good answers on that one? Or uh I didn't bother because I actually worked with them on this thing, so I know all about it. Um, okay, cool. So I didn't so have to ask Chat GP about that one. Okay, so. good. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they so that do they have some real ROI and value that uh oh sure. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful. That's yeah, great. It's for, yeah. It's, it's okay. an active site that's yeah. been out there and is still used. Yep. So, Tom, so I just went to yeah. Yeah. Tom, I just quickly looked at history, the page history, and it looks like Andrea added the Void Conscious Finance. Okay, so Andrea is not able to be on here. Right. In length here, uh, perspective, uh, we have multiple co-chairs here. Andrea uh, Frosinini over in Italy is, he has more of a trade finance background. So if you haven't talked with him, we should get you linked up link with him so that okay. uh, you understand, you know, his thoughts and he understands what you're thinking and, you know, we can then work together more closely. Sounds okay. great. Thanks. Sure. But thank you, uh, Alicia, for digging in there and finding out who did what. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I, I love that page history uh, feature. It's I found it very useful. Cool. Okay. Jeff, you yeah. want to talk about Kemcha Chem in India? Do you know anything about it? Yeah, it's right down below. I, I um. If you look right down, I've got the context runner right there. Um, okay. Funded. Right there. Yeah. Okay, Chem okay. Chain. Yeah, Chem Chain is the one you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, is, this, is this something that you know personally or, hey, it looks like a pretty good suspect for us to include? It looks like one of the good suspects. I don't know. So the one, for the, for, I know a lot about cosmetics. Um, <laughs> there's a reason for that. Um, and so... <laughs> Um, we'll save that for next next uh, round of conversations. Why you know a lot of <laughs> cosmetics since you were since you worked at an oil company. <laughs> well, well, just connected to oil company, oil bases for cosmetics. Yes. There you go. Makes so, yeah, I sense. In, I worked I worked in a refinery segment for for a few years, so um, I do know a lot about cosmetics. <laughs> um, where was I about? Oh, so yeah, um, they look again. It's not that one's out there. It's running. I didn't chat GPT post, but um, uh, I thought maybe it might be something you know, with uh, especially in the United States lately with train derailments. It's kind of interesting that that kind of hooks into there. So um, it 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 goes across the supply chain. But I I looked at that's a candidate. I haven't dug into it, but they got just fabric. Yeah, they okay. definitely sounds fabric. really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Pranub, uh, Ratul, do you know anything about ChemChain at all? Um, um, at least not uh, know them. You know, that's what I can see. But then, I, yeah, I've I've heard the name that they have started using it across. But then, yes, uh, no direct connect with them. That's what I can see. Being an Indian, okay. yeah, so yeah. Thanks. Okay. And maybe I'm not thinking. Maybe it's broader than India. I'm just going back as based on the dot in <laughs> there, which is probably a wrong assumption. There. Pranub, so any I'm, thoughts? Oh, sorry. 
Well, I'm looking at the uh, site right now. I haven't been, uh, uh, haven't seen this. I'm just trying to get grass as much as I can right now. Okay. Uh, I think they are into chemicals, so I uh, just reading about it. I haven't heard about it earlier. Okay, got it. Okay, well, that's good that you're checking into it here, yeah. and you can see we have some different eyes on it. And then uh, L'Oreal <clears throat> recommended by ChatGPT, but I think the I think what you said, Jeff, is. There's, there's not, I gave it enough because there's no detail on, you know, what actually is happening. There. Yeah. So I, I mean, I spent a few hours on this thing because it was just interesting with chat GDP, but I'll tell you this, they're out there using blockchain. It almost seems like they it was out there and they're hiding their um, solution, but L'Oreal is also out to work with a lot of small startups with blockchain to do NFTs. They're, they're heavily into it. If you go out and look at, see what they're up to. So why that's hidden on the blockchain that they use, I don't I don't know, maybe it's chat, maybe that's Chad GPT's problem that was out there in 21 and they mm. pulled all of the info. I don't know how they did it, but some of the links that yeah. they gave me about looking how they they gave about Chad GP came in with about four different links that said here's how L'Oreal and in company in, in partnership with IBM is using Hyperledger. Um so everyone seen one of those I clicked, I got a 404 page that exists. Hmm. Really? Yeah, like the pages were pulled. Interesting. So, um, yeah. Only thing I can say around the cosmetics industry, looking at all the different companies, I'll tell you one thing: is they're in really bad need of a global solution, a comprehensive global solution. They're all over the map. Um, this is half a trillion dollar industry. Um, they 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 need like a global solution sitting out there, a blockchain solution for the NFTs involved with the cosmetics. Um, and just some stuff going on with the NFTs and. Uh, I think it's uh, probably even the track and trace, right? You know, track and trace. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a must, but you know, just supply chain sustainability and so forth around that coming from the source, but also cosmetic companies are now getting heavily into uh, NFTs as an example. And I think it's a uh, Claiborne. This Claiborne, I think that's the one uh, came out with a lipstick called um, dark honey and it sold out right away. And the customers are getting upset. So they gave they sold, they auctioned NFTs off with pictures of the, lipstick container and gold wrap and also allowed them to have the NFT and when it came in stock they got right away they, they get their first line to get that get this lipstick I don't know what's about the lipstick but in any case and it also allows them to go to one of those stores and get a make free makeover okay uh, wow. they're doing it all on NFTs so they've got all kind of stuff at Cosmic World going I just see they cut through it it seems like supply chain train finance have a have a um an offering for the cosmetic industry because well, they're in need of it. Estee Waters trying to get in involved in it. Um, but um, again, I found some stuff that was just piece together. So I put these out as candidates. I don't want to keep messing around with throwing all these different ones out there. I looked at yeah. a bunch of cosmetic companies because again, I worked in a refinery. Actually, I worked in a refinery in the United States that was the biggest producer of basis for um, cosmetics. That's why it's in Whiting, Indiana. Yeah. And, uh, it's FDA controlled lab, and I was involved with their colorimeters or colors and stuff. But um, interesting area that really wants to do blockchain it has a lot of use cases for it but they seem to be scrambling around not knowing what to do so yeah it was interesting research yeah that's good um, that's good. it sounds like you found some good stuff there um, but, but blending into that the final one here is this everledger <clears throat> they're out there and, and they are um <clears throat> luxury brands whether it's um car well, it wouldn't be cars and purses or cosmetics or name a jewelry um, this company is out there and they use, um, uh, as you can see, fabric, they, they're out there. And as a matter of fact, I tried to, I found their website and I looked through all of it. It's all active. And I went to Chad GDP and I said, uh, uh, Everledger does not use the fabric framework, fabric framework. And I actually came back and said, no, you're wrong. Yes, it does. <laughs> so this time it went back the other way. So if you go to their website, they track and trace luxury goods, whether it's cosmetics, um, some with lithium batteries, diamonds. Um, they've been out there yeah. a while. So um, maybe somebody on the call knows about them. Yeah, actually, Everledger, I included them in a piece that I wrote back in 2017. Actually, okay. just, I just looked at my LinkedIn to, to, to find it. I'll put the chat there. They've been doing like you mentioned, diamonds, collectible wines. One of the first things they did uh, was the yes. Chai Wine Vault. The and chai that, wine, yeah. yeah, the Chai Wine Vault. And they work um, with 
IoT devices locking the wine so people could tell if the if the collectible bottles had been tampered with. So they they early on were doing really interesting, impactful work. Yeah, I think we'd have to do some due diligence to figure out where that where they are right now. Because the, yeah. the good news is that they have staying power. They're still here in 2023, right? Seven years later. Yeah, yeah. that's that slash dot one that's on there. It gives financial information on the company, how they're doing, and all kinds of projections around. So they're doing very well. So uh, yeah, there's ways of digging into this though. Something I'd have time to do that if you want me to dig further into some of those. I can also um I think some of everybody on the phone knows about Kaleido. Um, and they offer this, if you go and get a Kaleido account, you can pick, uh, I think, uh, well, different blockchains, but they offer Be Bezu and, and Fabric. And so I found some, I found a couple of cosmetic companies that are hosted on Kaleido, but I don't know which one they're using. Yeah. And I don't think they would give that info out. I, I don't know. So I, I was thinking about getting an account and going out there as a, posing as a business owner. And asking a bunch of questions about <laughs> what's the well, most Kaleido, common one used. A Hyperledger member, aren't they, Tomas? Yes. Okay. They're advertising it, yeah. Tomas, do you think you go to them, you or Daniela, go to Clido and say, hey, what, what, which of your solutions would you like to represent? So, um, Clido actually has the, on their website, they are showing the use cases uh, there. Mm -hmm. I can actually share it here if you'd like. You want to share? I can share. I can just, just let me find the link. I have it here somewhere. And while you're doing that, Ling, uh, you know, if if you with your solution, you're using Fabric, and you have some some uh, customers that have gotten our eye with it, and you know, you can demonstrate show that. I mean, we potentially could include you in this. So I want to throw it out there. It's just the the bet the bar is that you have some success with it. Yeah. You're on. You're on mute, Link. Yeah. Thanks for the offer. Uh, we may not be able to make this time, but hopefully next time. There you go. Okay. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we have something going on right now, but I think um, comparing to what you have there. Uh, we need to move faster. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. We're, we're like all of us startups, right? <laughs> yeah. Someone mentioned yeah, but... that Kaleido might be using Besu. And I think it would be really, really helpful if we included in the ebook examples that are using Besu or other Hyperledger renditions, not just Fabric. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We Yeah, we'd like to broaden. Oh, so yeah. you, you just... I saw you just put it in the link there, Tomas. You want to do that or did you want to uh, share screen? Yeah. Oh, no, I just wanted to share the use cases they have on the website okay. because there Fair is a couple okay. and it would take a lot of time to go through all of them, you know. Yeah, let's not mm -hmm. do that then. Okay, so so we got Kaleido. We got to maybe pick and choose one or, you know, which ones most look most interesting and then uh, get get their, uh, their take on it. I mean, not that yeah. they get the final editorial... Uh, um, decision but at least you know they can provide some guidance here okay um I, i'm sorry uh, can i jump in tom uh, i sure. can take a quick look at uh what alicia said in the note i think i, I would love to, you know if it works i would love to be included because we are uh, having traction right now and alicia would love to talk to you about food supply chain because some of sure. our customers are in agriculture happy to happy to. yeah okay that's that's great okay so maybe there maybe there is some success here with it. Yes. And, and, and Ling, if you yeah. want to go out there, I mean, it's public information, that ebook stuff there. If you want to just put your thing in there, that'd be great. That way How we when have. do you plan to publish the ebook? Um, our goal, so good good question. Our goal that we established was to try to have this out the door by the end of June. So sometime in the next couple of months. Okay. Here. I mean, we're not trying to boil the ocean or be intergalactic. Let's get something out there and we can have another version of it and we can do something fun off of that, riff off of it okay. is our goal. Thank you. Um, good. So thanks. Thanks, Link. Uh, let's see here. Alicia, would you like to uh, share a template that you... Uh, I would be happy to share a template. One moment. Because, so here's the, here's the, here's the, while well, she's bringing that up here, here's the, the next stage. So 
we still have to kind of go through and formulate uh, what our suspect list is here. And Pranub, I don't know if you have anything else you want to share here um, that you've discovered or um, are looking at that you haven't put in there in the ebook or anybody who's listening out there. I think we, we let it go for another uh, week or two. But the, the next step after that is to create using one of the templates here that Alicia is going to show is mm -hmm. to create is to create for the one the ones that we select there. So this shouldn't involve uh, it doesn't involve writing 10 pages. It doesn't inv even involve writing two pages. It involves writing a paragraph or two and maybe getting a quote. So Alicia, I'll, let, I'll turn it over to you. Sure, thank you. So first of all, I wanna share a template that Hyperledger put together that Daniela and Tomas put together, which is very helpful. So thank you so much, Tomas. And, and oh, sure. please let Daniela know that we really appreciate the work the two of you have done. Looking out, you know, having a template makes it a lot easier for us to understand what we're putting together and what Hyperledger thinks of as an ebook, because we'd originally been thinking it would mean writing case studies from scratch for a bunch of companies, whereas the Hyperledger model is a lot less work. So um, cover, scroll down. So an introduction to Hyperledger Foundation, descriptions of um, blockchain and supply chain, the supply chain SIG, very high level, not a lot of detail there. Um, to, to basically just introduce people to Hyperledger in supply chain, Hyperledger in general, and the work of the SIG, who's doing what, and then we get down to the use cases. So they put together this lovely little template sample up here, and then a couple of sentences on the use case, some additional resources here, if we can get a quote there as well. And Tomas and Daniela put together a page on GSBN. See this what it looks like with the sentences, a couple of resources here. One useful thing is, um, are they a member? What type of member are they? So GSBN is a general member. They're using Hyperledger Fabric. And I had put together a template as well. Let me pull this up. Um, so this, uh, just kind of a plug and play slide as well. For us, what's the project name, company or company names, what the URLs are, their membership level, three to five sentences. We wanna know which Hyperledger project they're using, what's the focus, who are the partners, who are the different stakeholders, what, what region of the world, because we wanna make sure we're showing that it is in use all around the world, not just, not just the United States, not just India, but really widely dispersed. And what's the business effect? What's been the return on investment for the companies that have been using it? Um, so ideally a project website and then a few references. I drafted one for DLT Labs since we've had them on a few times. Um, you see here a project name. The project they've spoken to us about was one they did with Walmart Canada. With the URLs there, given a description, including that the platform includes more than 200 data elements. It's useful for, for anyone learning to understand how much can be included in here. And carriers can access it easily through the web portal or an API. And they've streamlined their process from 11 to five steps. And dispute resolution has gone from more than 70% to less than 2%. That's that's showing this really is impactful. And Walmart Canada is seeing cost reduction close to 5% of annual freight expenses. That's about $30 million Canadian annually. Um, I put the project website at the top and then a case study um, that Hyperledger has on the Hyperledger website. Again, the Harvard Business Review study and then both the, both the presentation that Pete Gowanlock did here for our SIG in February, 
But Shannon Hamilton came in back before supply chain and trade finance SIGs combined, and she spoke to the supply chain SIG back in 2020. So that, that showed the project earlier and its development. So again, got a couple of two different templates that people can look at as you're, as you're putting together a profile. And this is a lot less work than writing a five or 10 page case study. It really just means looking for several different reputable resources and writing a, a you know, three to five, four to five sentence description that includes details that that help people understand how impactful the project is. Any questions? Did I lose Good. everybody? Nope, you did not. Thank you, Alicia, <laughs> for putting this together. So is, is your vision here that the page that you're showing right now is once we've established or even you know, here's ones that we know we're going to include here mm -hmm. that you would fill out page two there and or page one, page one, page one <laughs> page, fill that out. And then that could be reformatted into the actual document. Is that kind of the thought? Exactly. Exactly. That way people just put it here. And once we have all of this information, the formatting's easy. Cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. I'll stop that, sharing. I, that, that and I sense. I will add this file to today's meeting notes. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yes, okay. it does. Yes. Very good. Good. So a tool, you see that there's some success stories out there uh, here. So that's <laughs> good. Maybe some of those people are suspects for you to go after for your survey. And, uh, and, and, and you know, to be very honest, I was excited to see that because... And, you know, uh, just uh, just to keep you, you know, uh, uh, you know, just to talk about it because whenever I was talking to it, right? And recently, I heard the news of this uh, IBM and Merck's their trade lens platform being discontinued, starting from X Y Z time. So that actually made me feel a bit low. But then, I know when I now see that at least, you know, there are a few success stories that we also makes me think of writing the next research paper when we can at least say and talk and you know, at least you know, put some of the tangible you know companies name saying that yes and then you know, you know stop up with the findings which we, which is there from the perspective of the construction yeah. tools when you put across yeah. well and, i mean you you hit upon right there your feeling and some of our motivation and yes there were some uh, challenges last year where projects project died and now pay what there are some successes out there and we, we want to highlight those successes mm -hmm. and then build, help, help build off of those. So with that, um, I guess I'm thinking two, two thoughts here I'd like to propose. One is I think further um, adding further or doing further study for additional suspects out there um, over the next two weeks. And then the other portion of it is, is maybe certain ones of them we know we're going to include. We're going to include DLT labs. I mean, I think that, that's an amazing story, right? I mean, it's the one I always talk about when I talk about successes in blockchain um, out there. And there's some of these other ones that we might have to investigate a little bit further and try to figure out. Like, I'd love to know where Renault is with the Exceed project. I mean, we had uh, had them on a couple of years ago, but I haven't heard much since then. So, um, and clearly, Renault is a it, it, it meets the global distribution as you were talking about, Alicia, right? So it's not just the United States, and I know there's a boatload of stuff going on in in uh, Europe. Um, Tomash, we you know I don't know much of what's going on in China at all. So if we could represent a Chinese uh, example, that would be that might be good. There, um, GSBN is Chinese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it says it. Yeah. You know, is JD.com using Hyperledger? They're doing a lot of blockchain. I used to have a, a great contact internally there, but she's she's gone on, and the new people on the on the JD.com WeChat conversation are not so active. 
the new the new staff members are not as responsive. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Alicia, but I can check it out. Okay. Because yeah. I'd love to include either JD or if Alibaba is using Hyperledger, those are two major e-commerce companies that I think showing either of them would be bringing out the big jobs. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that would be. The only one yeah. I came across was uh, China Cosmetic Blockchain Consortium uses uh, fabric to track the uh, supply chain of cosmetic products. That's I didn't That's do an, much. I, I didn't do much more detail. They have a website. But yeah, it's called the China Cosmetic Blockchain Consortium, and they use fabric. I'm writing that one down right now. Thank you. <laughs> the things we're finding, man. This is good. Oh, I'm in the cosmetics. They probably don't have an English language WeChat though, <laughs> uh, and I am I am unfortunately still subliterate, and forgetting more every day. Subliterate. I <laughs> just uh, uh, have one one quick point, and maybe I'm not sure who can help out on that. But then there's a startup in India. I know who who I'm mentoring on. So the startup in India, you know, they are based out of Jaipur, Rajasthan. They are trying to build a platform wherein they can do the e blood bank supply. So the, the blood bank supply, and uh, they're trying reaching out to me. Uh, you know, if we can use the black uh, blockchain based technology platform, since I had limited time, I was completely caught up in my you know thesis submission and all. So I didn't get much time to uh, you know talk to them. But then, you know, maybe I can help if someone of you connect with, with the founder of that company. And then, you know, if we can think of exploring that opportunity of, you know, implementing it, you know, because, you know, and, you know, or maybe at least we can help them in terms of, you know, which are the readily available of the shelf product, you know, which they can think of using it uh, for, for, and the, you know, the person who is founder of it, he absolutely have a great plan for making this across, uh, uh, you know, across a big, right? And with India now trying to digitize the medical, in terms of putting the putting the online. Okay. Okay. So good. If, yeah. if a tool if you if you sense that they have gotten all the way through that they have some success where they can show some financial payback as well as qualitative payback, then it'd be great to talk with them for this project. Certainly happy to we could talk with them about you know what they're trying to do because we've had early stage people present on some of their stories. Uh, they just may not be appropriate for what we're trying to do with the ebook. So, okay. Okay. so thanks, mm -hmm. they, but exactly that's ideas. That's what we're looking for is trying to figure out here. Um, yeah. So look, I, I know we're at the top of the hour here. I'm going to, I'm going to let's give some last thoughts here. So I'd encourage everyone who's either here or listens to the, um, to the replay here to continue to try to add to the link that has um, possible suspects out there that I showed earlier on in this. Uh, and then if you feel like there's one, because we'll, we'll start, a, we'll start a, uh, assigning or asking people, that's probably a better way to say it. We'll start asking people to grab one or two uh, here and write them up um, in starting in the next, the next meeting we have, which I think I think it's on the 6th of May. I have to go back and think about it. Um, that sounds right. Alicia's wondering whether I got it right. 4th of May. 4th of May. 4th of May. Oh, man. <laughs> I clearly can't do the math across month boundaries. <laughs> there. It's a tricky one. <laughs> it is a tricky one. It's okay. It's 30 <laughs> this month. Okay. So anyways, yeah. So the 4th of May is our, our next time. And then we'll, we'll start asking folks to do one of these uh when you start a little documents, we'll start learning about it. And hopefully then we can, and our goal is to have somewhere around 10-ish, right? If we have eight good ones, that's okay, or seven. Or if we have 12 good ones, that's cool. We don't want 100, we don't want 20. We want to have somewhere around that 10-ish that kind of number there. So, so, so Tom, Tom, Alicia, how do we use that template that Alicia had? Up? Alicia, that template you have, how, how if we if we know somebody and we can actually get that info mm -hmm. to show them as a candidate, where's that template? I'm going to put after after the meeting. So today I'll be posting that template okay. to the to the should it for the meeting page or to the ebook 
page. You know, I'll do it to both. I'll, I'll share, I'll share it to both to make it really easy. And I guess if we can ask people to complete the template and then submit it to the ebook page, does that make the most sense? Add it to yeah. the ebook page. Mm -hmm. Add it to the ebook page. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Good. So with that, thanks for joining. Ling, thanks for uh, joining here first time. We'll, we'll see we'll see you again. We'll look more to hearing about uh, uh, Ledger funding there and what you're up to. And uh, for those of you listening on the recording, thanks for joining also. And we'll look forward to seeing you uh, live the next time if your schedule permits. So with that, I'm going to close it out here um, and enjoy the rest of your day. And Atul, thanks again for uh, sharing your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bye, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.